after Iran's unprecedented attack on Israel, all eyes are now on how it chooses to respond. Will Israel take further military action or will it declare victory, having proved to its enemies its ability to protect itself and absorb the attack in the interests of regional stability? Joining me now is Nader Hashemi, professor of Middle East politics at Georgetown University. Professor, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for the invite. Now, I wonder, do you think Iran's attack was ever really intended to cause genuine devastation in Israel? Or was this more of a face-saving measure, uh, you know, enough to satisfy its calls for revenge, but avoiding all-out war across the region? Yeah, it's more of the latter in my reading. Uh, if you follow the details of what happened, Iran gave advance notice to the United States through intermediaries that it was not interested in producing mass casualties but what was primarily interested in a mass spectacle. So no, uh, I don't think this was an attempt to, you know, kill a number of Israelis. It was trying to have a demonstration effect to show that Iran had deterrence capacity. With Iran, however, hitting Israel directly, you know, is this the end of the proxy war? How much have the rules really changed? They want to send a message to Israel that they're unhappy with the fact that their targets can be very easily hit, and uh, they're trying to establish new rules of the game. So we're in a very, very dangerous situation because now Israel is vowing a response. And if it responds to what happened yesterday, then Iran is going to be forced to respond. And then we're going to go up what's called the escalatory ladder toward a broader regional war. So um, these are very dangerous times. It seems like the United States has tried to uh, talk Israel back from the brink to not launch a retaliatory strike anytime soon. So I think there's a little bit of breathing space. So your assessment then is that the threat of a wider Middle East war then now depends on Israel's response? Correct. And what I'm reading from Israel is they're saying explicitly that they're going to respond in a time and place of their choosing, which means it's not going to be imminent. It's not going to be immediate. They're going to take their time. And I think they're going to try and coordinate any future attack with the United States and with, with, and with its other allies in the region. You know, an unexpected actor that sort of played a role in Israel's defense was Jordan. Um, I wonder, you know, what you make of that and whether you think Israel should be focusing on strengthening its ties with its Arab partners. Jordan has been very quiet about exactly what it did to help Israel because the Jordanian people are living under an authoritarian regime, uh, a regime that's very unpopular. Um, and people are very upset. Why, why, why does Jordan have the military ability and capability to come to Israel's defense, but not to the defense of the people of Gaza? A reminder that the unresolved question of Palestine is a destabilizing element in the politics of the region. Lots to unpack. We'll leave it there for now, Professor. I appreciate your insight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.